In this video, we'll take a look at the biosocial development as it occurs during the phase of development known as early childhood. So first of all, just keep in mind that um, usually between the ages of two through six, you know, as long as a child, you know, is well nourished, you know, it might, um, you know, increase in height, you know, roughly, you know, three to four inches and gain about four to five pounds in weight. Now, one thing of, of concern at this phase of development is obesity. And uh, childhood obesity, you know, can be one of the most serious public health challenges of this century. And a couple of things, you know, that I put here just to think about, you know, is socioeconomic status, you know. So as family income decreases, you know, both malnutrition and obesity may increase, you know. So uh, it's just something to kind of keep in mind and think about. And, uh, you know, a couple other things I put right here, you know, obesity can be a sign of poor nutrition and parents might tend to, um, you know, if they have overweight children, might tend to underestimate a child's weight. Uh, so you might want to think about, you know, why that might occur. Okay, so we're going to take a look a little more in depth at brain growth during this phase of development. and. Um, a couple of statistics here I put here, you know, by age two, you know, a child's brain, you know, weighs, it weighs about 75% of its adult weight. But by the time it uh, reaches age six, its brain actually reaches 90% of its adult weight, which is usually kind of surprising to students to learn that the brain develops that rapidly. So a couple of terms here I just want to make you aware of, sprouting and pruning of dendrites. Um, sprouting, that just, that just means basic um, growth. Um, and then pruning, um, that means uh, basically kind of like um, it cuts down. It, I wouldn't say, you know, dies necessarily, but it definitely cuts down dendrites. And uh, we'll take a look at, you know, this a little more in depth, you know, as we progress through this course. And another thing, too, is because of the increased uh, uh, mature, maturation of the brain during this phase of growth, um, you know, that will usually result in increased social understanding. And um, so, uh, you know, so a couple things to think about, you know, during, you know, the social understanding that usually develops because the prefrontal cortex matures and emotional control improves. So just some things to think about. I want to make you aware of that. And um, you, if you want to uh, discuss this in discussions, you know, or something, you know, feel free to. Continuing on with brain development, um, one of the primary reasons, you know, for faster thinking, you know, as children begin to think faster and a lot more clearly is because they actually have um, extensive myelination occurring in the brain. And myelination, you know, I did put a, um, a definition here, you know, that's the process which axons, be, axons become coated with myelin. And uh, myelin, you know, is a fatty substance that speeds the transmission of nerve impulses from neuron to neuron. So basically, I just want to make you aware that that occurs throughout um, our entire life. And that's the whole reason why when we become more experienced at something, uh, we humans tend to get better and faster at it. And so that's why studying, practicing tends to make us better and faster at almost everything because um, myelination is occurring along the axons. Okay, and we're going to take a look at a couple, just a couple of the um, basic uh, parts of the brain. Um, structures of the brain, if you want to refer to it that way, um, you know, the, just to be aware of here. So what's uh, one important term right here is called the corpus callosum. And that is basically um, the band of nerve fibers that connects our left and right hemispheres of our brain and allows them to, to communicate with each other or between each other. And uh, so, um, 
you know, the majority of us have always heard of, well, we've got a left brain and a right brain. And so what we're actually referring to is the hemispheres of the brain. And what connects those is the cor corpus callosum. Now, the next term we want to be aware of is what's called lateralization. And that's just specialization in certain functions, you know, each side of the brain. So basically all that means is, you know, like left brain, you know, that can controls um, um, the right side of the body and vice versa. But more specifically, you know, the left brain, that's usually concerned um, and it specializes in things like um, verbal type information, you know, whereas the right brain, you know, uh, specializes more in you know, say uh, imagery and things like that. Uh, now, just keep in mind, though, that these are broad generalizations and actually the brain actually works uh, both both um, sides of the brain, you know, or hemispheres, if you want to uh, refer to it that way. They constantly work together. So I just want to point out, you know, this is just kind of, um, you know, a couple important points here, you know, when we think about the brain, you know, so, you know, remember left brain and right brain, they constantly work together. It's not just one is really on and one is off at any given point in time. Um, so can, uh, just want to make you aware, you know, that um, there is no exclusive sightedness in healthy people. That means, you know, their brains, you know, both hemispheres are constantly uh, working. And, um, you know, so I just remind you of that, the both sides of the brain, they're involved in almost every skill. And uh, the brain is very flexible. Okay, so definitely, you know, we're going to take a look at uh, in brain development, you know, why planning and analyzing starts to really increase as uh, the prefrontal cortex, that's the part of the uh, brain that is uh, right in front you know, right in front of our our brain, you know, the region in front of our brain. So uh, as that matures, usually between ages two through six, you know, there's, um, uh, you know, an increase in, in the nerve development. You know, we call that neurological increases, you know, especially notable in areas of the cortex, you know. And so um, to keep this simple, you know, things like planning, thinking, social awareness, and language, those are all starting to improve as the prefrontal cortex matures. And I noted, you know, I noted a few things here, but um, I'm not going to stop and read each of these, but feel free to pause this and look over these, um, you know, just to gain a little more insight and a little more familiarity with these. So, just real quick, uh, just to remind you, you know, so maturation, you know, the maturing of the frontal prefrontal cortex, you know, that generally, um, you know, facilitates, you know, focused attention. So definitely, if you notice that, you know, as children get a little bit older, they're able to focus a little more um, at intensely on um, either language or objects or whatever they're doing. Um, whereas when they're younger, you know, um, they may be a little more, you know, less capable of focusing. So just, you know, I know I'm speaking very simply about this, you know, but, um, you know, we're not really concerned about becoming neuroscientists in this. We just want to get a broad overview of how this works at this phase of development. So a couple things, you know, as, you know, uh, children, you know, as they start getting involved in certain activities, you know, like take, for instance, here, you know, we, you know, we have some images, you know, of um, uh, young females, you know, or young children, you know, doing dance or um, ballet or something, you know. So those are what's known as gross motor skills. Gross means, you know, basically large, you know, motor skills, you know, so, um so as the brain matures, you know, um, you know, they become, you know, can can be possibly more motivated and um, and they tend to um, as, if they achieve guided practice, you know, that that actually makes their um, gross motor skills, you know, increase. So um, 
things, you know, like to keep in mind, you know, things like culture, you know, um, where they're at, where they're located, you know, even socioeconomic status, you know, that's, you know, that can they can be factors in all of this in the development of this. OK, now in distinction here, we're going to take a look at fine motor skills and fine motor skills just means, you know, very small motor skills, you know, things like uh, finger movement. So, uh, you know, as an example, let's just say, um, you know, like playing a um, piano or something, you know, that would be a little more fine motor skill than something like dance or ballet, you know, or sports. Um, so fine motor skills, you know, they're a little bit more difficult to master. You know, they involve, you know, small hand and finger movements, etc. Um, so, you know, on average, you know, um, you know, uh, the, which is, you know, students are often surprised at this, you know, but on average, you know, that um, fine motor skills, they actually develop, um, you know, maybe six months earlier in females than they do in, in males. And, um, you know, so that's just, I put that in there because uh, students are generally a little surprised by that. Now, during this age um, group, you know, between two and six, you know, um, you know, things like artistic expression, they start to develop, um, you know, so uh, I just put this in here for your information. Feel free to pause this if you want to look at this a little more in depth and think about this. Okay, switching gears here, we're going to take a look at a couple other things, you know, like what might um, influence, you know, biosocial development um, in a negative way in this phase of development, you know, so definitely child maltreatment is um, a, a very strong factor in this, in that question. So maltreatment, you know, um, is basically um, intentional harm or avoidable endangerment of anyone under 18 years of age. That's, that's the official term for child maltreatment. Now, uh, childhood abuse, though, that's a deliberate action that's harmful to a child's physical, emotional, or sexual well-being. So that's the difference between maltreatment and abuse. Now, on the other hand, there's one other type of uh, term I want to make you aware of, and that's childhood neglect. And that's just basically that's the failure to meet a child's basic physical, educational or emotional needs. So that's just basically a failure to meet their basic needs. You know, um, so uh, I highly recommend you pause the video, make some quick notes and become familiar with these terms. OK, moving on, we we'll take a look at a couple other terms, you know, PTSD, that means post traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. So that's basically uh, defined, you know, that's an anxiety disorder <clears throat> that develops as a delayed reaction to having experienced or witnessed a profoundly shocking or frightening event. So, um, you know, that can be something, you know, like, um, you know, uh, violence that occurs in the family, you know, uh, for example, or some other type of frightening event. Um, so these are just to make, you know, some broad generalizations to make you aware of some of the definitions of some of these terms. Now in PTSD, those who are um, maybe experiencing some post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, you know, that may include flashbacks, you know, thinking about the event, you know, um, they may become hyperactive or hyper vigilant. Uh, vigilant I'm sorry <laughs> and uh, so I just want to make you aware of that and um, so they may have sleep problems you know um, anger problems anger management problems um, you know uh, nightmares etc so those are just some of the things that can occur with those who are experiencing uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD and uh, just also something to think about you know the effects of maltreatment you know, they can be, um, you know, uh, devastating and they can also be long lasting. They can actually affect a person throughout their lifespan. So uh, that's also something to be, you know, uh, greatly aware of. And, um, you know, as ag again here, I highly recommend you pause the video and, and read through these um, bullet points right here. 
and we're going to move on here. So, uh, so preventing maltreatment, you know, so how do we prevent maltreatment, you know, and so as um, behavioral scientists, you know, we have, you know, said, well, there are three levels of prevention, basically. There's primary right here. That's the first level of pre prevention right here. And that focuses, you know, like on the neighborhood, the family, you know, um, financial stability or instability. Um, you know, uh, family um, isolation, you know, and teenage parenthood, you know, so all those are, are considered um, if, if those are um, controlled and dealt with and everything, those can be um, the primary uh, modes of uh, maltreatment prevention. Now, secondary prevention, uh, that's going into the next layer of prevention. That focuses, um, you know, on things like uh, I, I identifying, you know, and intervening, you know, like attachment type disorders or something like that. You know, so so take, for instance, you know, a social worker or um, uh, uh, types of, um, you know, types of, you know, psychological um, intervention or something like that. That can be also secondary prevention. Now, finally, we'll move on to tertiary. Tertiary, all that means is third, you know, so that's the third level of prevention. And that basically is, um, you know, more from the outside within, you know, that focuses on limiting harm after maltreatment, you know, so that's after the fact. So if maltreatment has occurred, then we may need to pursue, you know, like tertiary type preventive type um, uh, processes. So that concludes our discussion um, on the biosocial uh, type um, uh, factor in this phase of development. So I just want to uh, assure you to uh, keep going, keep growing on this. You know, um, uh, in this phase of development, we have two more chapters to look at, and uh, we will see you in the next chapter.